given so let's discuss the last problem of today's weekly contest maximum total beauty of the gardens so we are given an array of flowers where each element denotes the number of flowers in that particular garden so for example this three denotes that there are three flowers in the second garden this one denotes there are one flower in the third garden and so on then we are given a integer new flowers which denotes how many extra flowers we have to be planted in any of these gardens then we then we have given the integer target which basically help us define the total number of full like how, how a full garden is defined so basically if a garden contains x flowers and x is greater than equals to target then that garden is full or in other words if uh, there are a garden is full if the number of flowers in the garden is greater than or equals to this target value now we want to maximize the total beauty of the set of gardens so a beauty is defined by this uh, equation so let's try to understand this with an example so let's say this is the flower uh, basically the second garden contains four flowers third garden contains three flowers and so on and this is the equation of the beauty so basically if x gardens are full then the beauty will be defined as x into full plus minimum flower in non full into partial so the value of full and partials are given okay so now let's try to uh, find like let's try to understand this beauty a little bit better by doing an example so let's say we have 10 flowers to be planted right so uh, for we, we let's say we decide to plant uh, eight flowers here so the number of flowers in this garden will become 12 and let's say we decide to plant two flowers here so number of flowers in this garden will become four okay now we have to find out the number of full gardens so full gardens are the gardens which have greater than or equals to five flowers so this is a full garden and this is a full garden so there are two full gardens in this case and would be multiplied by this full value and then for non full gardens so these are the non full gardens for non full gardens you have to find the minimum value so minimum of 3 and 4 is 3 so 3 into 6 so that's the beauty so the beauty would be 22 okay so again uh, let's uh, take one more example so if uh, uh, for example if we say if we have uh, decided to put let's say eight uh, or nine flowers or twelve all the ten flowers in this only so this will become twelve okay so now uh, total total number of full gardens are two this is a full garden this is a full garden so total number of full garden is two two will multiply by two plus for non full gardens this is non full garden and this is a non full garden so among these two three is the minimum so three into six so again the value of this set of gardens is again 22 so basically the fraud problem ask us to do is we need to find all possible combinations from all possible combinations we will get uh, the value of beauties the several values of beauties and from this set of beauties we need to find the maximum so that's what the problem states okay so hope the problem is clear now let's try to solve it so let's try to first understand uh, this uh, equation or this expression a little bit better so this expression contains two variables x and minimum flowers in non full okay so whenever you have to deal with an expression which contain two variable it is always a uh, wiser idea to fix any of the variable and then try to solve the reduced problem so let's say we fix x uh, we fix x so what what does x denotes uh, x was x denotes that number of gardens which are full okay so let's say we fix x uh, and we fix x to 2 so basically what we are saying is there are two gardens which are full so first of all there would be some flowers let's say there are f flowers uh, are required to make the garden uh, to make uh, uh, two gardens full okay so let's say this uh, f flowers are required to make this two gardens full now how many flowers which are left we are left with so we are left with uh, new flowers minus f number of flowers okay so 
this is the number of flowers that is left with us. N uh, new flowers minus F. Okay. So now with this new flowers minus F, we need to maximize this value, non flower in non full, uh, minimum flower in non full. So first of all, let's try to understand what this value is actually. So let's say this is the non full, uh, non full gardens in our case, and we need to find the maximum value of this variable, right? So let's just denote it with M. So we need to find the maximum value of M. So the value of M is the minimum of these three. So we need to increase these three such that the maxim minimum of these three is maximized. So how we will do that? So the minimum is two here, right? So let's first try to increase two. So let's increase two by three, uh, by one flower with, by, with three. Now again, the minimum here is three. So the, the value of M is now three. Now if you have to increase the value of M to four, we have to increase this three to four first. All the threes to be, should be increased to four first. Okay. And now we have four, four, four. So M will be four. Now let's say we have to increase M to five. So then we have to increase this four to five. Then we will have to increase this four to five as well. And then we have to increase this four to five as well. So basically what we are doing is if we have uh, more number of flowers, let, this is the number of flowers that we have currently, right? So if we have more number of flowers, then we can make the value of M more larger. So hope this argument makes sense. So what we are trying to say here is uh, to make this X number of uh, gardens full, we have to spend F flowers. So we are left with this many flowers. Now to maximize this value of M, the greater the value of flowers, the better. So the greater the value of this, the better. So to increase the value of this, we need to decrease the value of F. Right? That's where this entire thing will be increased. So what we are saying is we need to find F such that uh, like we need to find X gardens or we need to make X gardens a full garden such with the minimum number of flowers. So how uh, now let's, let's just uh, try to do this. So first uh, we have, let's say this garden, two, three, four, five. These are the four gardens that we have. Now we need to make two gardens uh, of them full garden. So full garden is defined as uh, the garden which have at least five flowers. So now we have to make two gardens full, uh, as full garden and we need to spend minimum number of flowers to make that happen. So which of these four you will choose to be the full garden if you want, if you want to make the two gardens full with minimum value? with minimum flowers. So basically the last two gardens, right? Because let's say if you choose this garden and any other garden, let's say this garden to be a full garden, then the number of flowers required to make this garden a full garden would be larger than the number of flowers required to make this garden a full garden because this initially has more number of flowers. So the number of flowers required will be lesser. Okay. So first we sort the array. After sorting the array, we take the last X elements uh, and we try to find how many flowers are required to make this a full. So that's where we found F. Now, after finding F, we know that uh, we are left with this many flowers mm, and we will then try to find the maximum value of this value, uh, this uh, variable. So in a sense, what we are basically doing is this. So for each combination of X, basically X gardens are full. We first try to find the minimum number of flowers to make X garden full. That is F. Uh, for this, if you remember, we have sorted the array and take the last X elements. And then we have to find the maximum flowers in non full gardens. So basically we have to find the maximum value of this variable. And then the result equals to max of result comma X into full plus Y into partial. So the value of this let's say is by so Y into partial. And we have to do this for every possible value of X. Okay. So what are the possible value of X? There can be zero full garden. There can be one full garden. There can be two full garden and so on and so forth until N. So there can all the garden can be full. So basically we are iterating over each possible value of X and there are N possible values of X. And for each we are trying to find this and this. So this we can easily find like this, the last X elements. 
So this is very easy. Now the challenge is to find this effectively. Like we can't do n square because n itself is very large in the problem. So we have to find this in lesser than n time. So let's now solve that problem. So first of all, uh, let's remove this. Yeah. So first of all, we we need to find this maximum flowers in non-full gardens after planting at max f flowers. Okay. So let's say the target is 12 and we have to, we can plant at max 15 flowers. Okay. So now what we, uh, we will look at this. So basically now what we are saying is, uh, we have these four gardens as non full gardens and the target is 12. So what is the maximum value of M or what is the maximum, what is the maximum value of this expression? Let's say this expression is M. So what is the maximum value of M? Uh, for this set of gardens. So target is 12, right? First of all, we need to make every garden a non-full garden. So we can't increase any of these to greater than interval. So 11 can be the maximum value that we can get because if we make it to 12, then this garden will not remain a full non-full garden. It will become a full garden. So that's where the maximum value that we can get for M is 12. Okay, so M should be less than or equals to 11. And what is the minimum value of this M? Already minimum is two. Like there can be, there can't be any value which is less than two. We have to only increase the number of flowers. We can't decrease it. So minimum value of M is 12. So these are the possible value of M. So why not try all possible value of M? So let's say we first try two, whether we can uh, get maximum of these four, two or not. If yes, we will try three. Whether we can get maximum of all this as three or not. If yes, we will try four. The if yes, we will try five. So uh, we will keep on trying until 11. And as soon as let's say, uh, let's say at 10, we came to know that this is not true. So we can't make everything, the maximum of all this, all this as 10. So then nine will be our answer because the nine is the maximum value which we can get uh, with 15 flowers. So now the question is, uh, if let's say we need to make everything to five, how will we determine whether it is possible to make everything to five or not? So for this, we have to iterate over all the elements which are less than five. So currently there are two elements and increase them to five. So to increase two to five, we require three flowers to increase four to five. We require one flower. So in total, we require four flowers to increase all the elements to at least five and we have 15 flowers. So five is possible. That's what, that's what we said. Okay. Now, if you remember, we have to solve this problem in less than n time, right? But if we have to, if we iterate over all the M, uh, that will be definitely greater than or equals to N, right? So we can't iterate over every possible value of M. So again, we can't iterate over every possible value of M and we have to do faster than linear search. So the pro the solution like that should come to your mind is binary search. So again, by what binary search is, so we are given uh, some ranges. We will partition it into half and we will either go to the left or go to the right, not to the both. So let's try to apply this logic here. So let's say uh, like we have everything up till uh, six, seven, uh, eight, and nine. Okay. So we have everything up till 11. So now let's say we partition it to half. Uh, and what we are saying is six is possible. So uh, what we are saying is six is possible. So if six is possible, does it even make sense to try two, three or four or five? Because what we are saying is the minimum value of all this six can be a six is a possible value of a possible minimum value of all this. So it doesn't make sense to try any of this. So we will only search in the right part of the array. Similarly, if let's say uh, the value of six is no, the answer of six is no. Basically we can't make uh, the entire thing. Like the number of flowers required to make this entire thing six is greater than the, requi the required flowers we have. So in that case, it doesn't make sense to search in the right part of the array because if six itself can't be made, we can't increase it to seven because increasing it to seven will require more number of flowers. Right. So that's where 
we apply the binary search. Basically, either we are going to left or we are going to right. We are not going to both the directions. So let's just try to see what we have just done. So we have applied a binary search and for each number, like each middle element, we are trying to answer whether T can be answered or not. So for this, what we have done is uh, for find all the elements which are less than T and see how many flowers are required for making this element equal to T. So if required flowers is less than the value of F, then we can say it's possible. Otherwise, it is not possible. So we are now not iterating over every possible of value of M. Instead, we are iterating over, uh, we are doing a binary search. So that will require us to iterate over only log M values of M. But for answering this yes or no, like either to go left or to go right, we have to perform these steps, right? And if you see this step will require us to iterate over all the elements which are less than T, right? So this will be multiplied with N. So this is again not efficient because we have uh, uh, decreased one part, but again, this part is not efficient. Like we are requiring total N, uh, we, we, to answer whether to go left or right, we, we are requiring N time. So that is not efficient. Now you can think like number of elements less than T, right? So you can pause the video and try to think how can you optimize this N uh, to something better uh, and then come back to see the solution. So the solution is basically this. So what we want to do is we have to find how many flowers are required for making the minimum minimum element of the array equals to T. So if uh, for this, if let's say uh, T equals to eight, then number of flowers required is uh, this will require four number of flowers. This will require six number of flowers. So total 10 flowers are required to uh, make the minimum element of this entire sequence to eight. Okay. So the, like we have to find this 10, the value this 10 efficiently. So how to do it? So notice that we have sorted the array in the very first place itself. So this array is entirely sorted. Okay. And we have to find the number of elements required to make the array equals to T every like at least minimum equals to T. So now if let's say T comes here in our case eight. So let's say eight comes here, like after this, uh, before this, uh, after this four or before this nine. So if eight comes here, all the elements after this are already getter. We like that will like to make everything eight, we require zero flowers to be planted we will only require to plant flowers for these elements, right? Now, how many flowers are required to plant uh, for these elements? It basically, so there are two gardens, right? And we have to plant, uh, we have to make eight flowers here. So in total, there, there should be 16 flowers in these two gardens. And currently there are six flowers. So total required flowers is 10, okay? So that's how we find 10. What we have done basically is we first try to find the position of eight in this, uh, uh, in this array. And for this position of eight, we try to find the sum of everything after eight and the number of elements after eight. And num let's say the number of elements is two. So we multiply two with eight because we want everything to be eight at least. So this is, this should be the required number of flowers. And the current flower is the sum of these two, which is six. So we just subtract six from this and we get 10. So now, so like doing this entire thing is just a binary search over this entire in the sorted array. And the second part of finding the sum of this entire thing, it's again can be done easily using prefix sum. Okay. So that's where our solution lies. So to find the number of flowers, uh, to make the number of flowers, uh, number to find the number of flowers required to make all the elements, at least T we first find the index i which denotes like which is the position of t in the original sorted array and then we find number of elements after i which would be equals to n minus i and then we sum up all the elements after i let's say the sum is sum the, so the answer would be n minus i into t minus sum so this is the total like we require everything to be t 
for all these elements. So that's why this is the total sum and current sum is this. So subtraction of this will give us the required number of flowers. So basically what we have done is instead of doing linear search for this part, we are now doing a binary search again. So this part will be log in again. So, uh, so this entire part that we have is now reduced to log m into log n. Okay, so now let's try to uh, club all of this together. What we, whatever we have discussed, let's try to club, club all of this together. So what first thing that we have discussed is uh, we first fix the value of x. Okay, now after fixing value of x, we find the minimum number of flowers required to make x gardens full. So that, that we like this we do by sorting the array and taking the last x elements. After that we require the maximum value of second variable which is the non-full the minimum number of uh, maximum number of flowers or minimum number of flowers in non-full gardens. So this should be uh, minimum number of flowers in non-full gardens. Now once we find uh, like how to find this uh, this we have found using this. So for we have to try all possible values from this min value to target minus one because if we go above target minus one, the guard like the flower the garden will not be full. Uh, the garden will not be not full. So that's where we the maximum value that we can go is target minus one. So we can't iterate over every target. So that's where we do a binary search here because we have seen that we can make the decision whether to go left or to go right. So that that comes as log of t. Now, to decide whether to go left or right, we need to answer whether uh, t is possible or not. Whether the minimum value of all this entire set, the t is possible or not. So for that, uh, we what we have done is again a binary search. So we find the first index t, uh, for the i, the index i for where t can lie, and then we find the number of elements after i. And then we find the total sum of the elements after i, and that will be the required element. So if this is less than f, uh, we will go left or we go right. So that's where this entire part is log n, and the the total complexity now becomes n into log t into log n. So that is the final time complexity of the solution. Okay. So let's try to, so if like, I know this is very involved solution, you can go through the entire video again uh, if you don't understand it, but let's try to look at the code that will make it a little bit more clear. So that's the code. Uh, we have uh, total flowers. We have new flowers, target, full and partial. So what we are doing is we are sorting the array, finding the suffix sum and then uh, if you remember, we have we have sorted the array in reverse order, okay? Because what we want is we want to answer the first question: uh, minimum number of uh, minimum number of flowers required to make X garden full. So that's where we are starting with X equals to zero. Basically, we don't want any garden to be full. So that's where this lies. We don't want any garden to be full. So we 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 find the minimum flowers required, the value of minimum flowers that the second variable uh, using this function. We will look at the function later. So we find the uh, minimum flowers required using this function and then uh, we put equate it with the current answer. This is with when x is zero. So if the number of, if there are any full, so let's say there is already uh, in our example, two, three, four, five and target equals to five. So in this case, there is already one uh, garden which is full. So in this case, we can't have x equals to zero. So that's where this condition. So if the largest element is already greater than target, we can't have this. So then, then answer will be zero. Otherwise, if it is less than target, then we can try uh, e like try this x equals to zero and try to find the maximum value of the second variable. Now we will go for x equals to one, x equals to two, x equals to three, and so on. So basically this is the like to make one flower uh, to make one garden full we this is this this captures the number of flowers required to make uh, j plus one number of gardens full so if 
flowers of J is less than target, then this much this many uh, flowers are required to make the garden full. So that's where we added this to required for full. Now, if required for full itself is greater than the new flowers, so if number of flowers required to make X garden full is itself greater than the number of flowers that we have we are allowed to plant, then we will simply break. Otherwise, we know that we know the first part of the expression j plus one cross full. We have fixed x. Now we want second part of the expression, and we'll multiply that with partial. So let's look at the second part of the expression. So this is how we cal we calculate the second part of the expression. So this is additional flower. In our case, it is f. Uh, so this is the number of additional flower that we have, and this is the target. This is the start index. Uh, this is total like flowers array and this is suffix m. Now, what we are doing, as discussed, we are iterating over, uh, we are doing a binary search over the answer. So if you remember, uh, we, so we know that m lies in this range. So we, we can't iterate over every possible value of m. So that's where we do a binary search over m. So that's what we are doing. So we have initialized with it with the minimum value, which is flower of n minus one and the maximum value, which is target minus one. And uh, then we are doing a binary search. We find the minimum, uh, we find the mid. And then if you remember to find, to find whether to go left or right, to find whether to go left or right, we are again doing a binary search, right? So that's this part. We are again doing a binary search. We are trying to find the index i, number of elements after i, then the total sum, and then this will be the required uh, number of flowers. And if this is less than or equals to f, we will decide whether to go left or right. So that's where we are finding the index of m with the uh, binary search upper bound. And then we require a uh, number of uh, indexes after this index m. And then we find out the total number of required fl flowers. So this is like, uh, number of index after m into t, like this is entire t, like in our example, this is the t, and uh, this is the total sum. So if after index is less than n, uh, we, we just calculate the sub, we, so in suffix sums, we have the suffix sum of the array. So after index will give us everything starting from the ending to this index. So that the suffix sum will just subtract it and we'll get the required number of flowers. And if required number of flowers is less than or equals to additional flowers, so basically we have this much flowers with us. So we will try to search in the right part of the array. We will move the L and we'll search in the right part of the array. Otherwise we will search in the left part of the array. So there is one more thing here. We make, we for after index, we make the index of, like we also take a, a start index in this because if let's say uh, we make these two flowers, uh, this let, let's say if we make these two as, uh, so basically we have making X number of gardens a full a full garden, right? So if we make these two garden a full garden, we don't want to include this in the calculation. So that's where we are finding, we are trying to find the start index. So start index denotes that. So that's where like we are, uh, with this start index, we are taking the maximum so that we get the actual start index. So this this index basically denotes, so just to clear, so let's say start index is this. This is the start index. And let's say the index that we got by doing a binary search is this. So basically we are saying we have to find the value after this index. And binary search says after this index, all of them are less than eight. So that's where we have to give the maximum of these two. Okay. So hope that makes sense. So this is for that purpose only. So that's the entire solution. Uh, you, if you have any doubts about this problem, you can link them in the comment section below. I will answer them. Uh, so hope if you find this useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I post uh, regular videos, uh, about interview experiences. You can watch that check. Uh, you can check out that playlist as well. I will link them in the description below. Thank you.